click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video I am going to discuss a relationship between friction force and applied force with the help of one idealized graph. So let's start the discussion over idealized graph of friction force and applied force. So as we discussed earlier about the friction force and concepts related to friction force. So as per that, we can say the friction force is always act opposite to the direction of motion or opposite to the direction of applied force. And when the force is continuously increasing, so the value of friction force is also changing or variable according to variable value of forces. So how the value of friction is changing or the value of friction force is changing when we are changing the value of applied force. So this particular condition I am going to discuss with the help of one idealized graph. So as you can see here in this particular diagram this particular graph is representing the relationship between the friction force and the applied force. So here you can see the horizontal side or horizontal line is represented as the applied force on any particular body and vertical side is represented as friction force. So if we are continuously increasing the value of applied force, so how the value of friction force is changing, here I am going to discuss and there are various conditions we will consider when the values of applied force and the friction forces are changing. So when the body is in stable condition and we are applying external force on the body, so the contact surface or whatever surfaces we are considering, so contact between the surface is maximum. So at that particular condition, we generally consider maximum friction before starting motion. So here, first condition we are considering when we are not applying load. So in this particular condition, this point origin point is representing the zero applied force and at the zero applied force we are considering the value of friction force is zero. So when this particular applied force is increasing, so this particular line is represented as increase in applied force. Here we will consider if we are considering P is the external force. So here P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 up to Pn, these values we are considering as change in applied force. When we are applying increase in force, so in that particular condition, simultaneously the value of friction will also change and that change in friction we will mark here in this vertical line as per the value of forces. For P1, we will consider friction force as F1. For P2, we will consider friction force as F2. And for Pn value, we will consider friction force as Fn. And the variation of these friction force and applied force, we will mark by this inclined line. It means after application of force, if the body is still in stable condition, in that particular time, the value of friction will continuously increase because contact between the surface is maximum. So this particular value of friction will continuously increase after increasing the value of friction force. And this particular term, you can see 0, 1, this particular line is representing the condition of static friction when the body is in stable condition or when the body is in static condition. So this particular line where we are considering increase in fo friction force and increase in applied force, this is represented by this inclined line 0, 1. This particular zone 0, 1 is represented as zone of static friction. This particular zone 0, 1 is represented as zone of static friction. The value of friction is continuously increased in zone of static friction. And as you can see, this point 1. So this point 1 is representing the condition of maximum friction and maximum friction we generally consider at the impending motion. So impending motion is what? Impending motion where the body is tend to start the motion. The body is just about to move and at that particular condition the friction value is maximum because at that particular time the contact between the surface is maximum and from that point the contact between the surface will reduce. So 
this point 1 is representing as the impending motion condition and when the body will start motion after this. Here if we are not applying this particular force or if we are not increasing this particular applied force. So in this particular reason you can see this 1 2. So in this 1 2 reason the friction force will reduce. Here this is the impending motion condition where we are considering maximum friction and during this particular reason 1 2 when we are not increasing the force or the value of force in that particular condition also during impending motion the value of friction will reduce. So this particular force at this point is represented as the kinetic friction and this particular 1 2 reason is representing decrease in friction because of motion. So this is our second condition during friction. Now after this if we are increasing the value of applied force here at point 2 the friction is reducing and at point 1 the friction is maximum. So this is represented by F dash. So F dash is generally representing the static friction and F double dash is representing the condition of kinetic friction because here we are considering the motion of the body. Body is trying to move. Now after this if we are increasing the value of applied force in that particular condition the contact between the surfaces will continuously reduce and in this particular condition the value of friction will be constant after applying the external force or after increasing the value of external force. So this is represented by zone 2-3. So this 2-3 zone is represented as zone of kinetic friction because the body is in moving condition and we are considering the kinetic friction condition here. So this particular zone 2-3 is represented as zone of kinetic friction. So here you can see Fs is representing this particular zone. Here you can see this triangle this triangle is representing the zone of static friction and after this, this particular vertical line, there will be zone of kinetic friction or dynamic friction because the condition we are considering here that is dynamics. So this 2-3 reason is called the zone of kinetic friction. 1-2 reason is representing decrease in friction because of the motion and 0-1 reason is representing zone of static friction and maximum friction we generally consider at the impending motion. So this particular graph, so this particular graph is representing the relation between the friction force and the applied force. And here if we are increasing the applied force, so as per the conditions, the value of friction force will increase in static friction zone and 1, 2 is representing decrease in friction because the body is in motion, it will start motion and here from 2 to 3 we will consider zone of kinetic friction because the body is in dynamic condition. So this is the idealized graph between the friction force and the applied force and here F dash is considered as the static friction condition and F double dash is represented as the dynamic or kinetic friction. If we want to write down the condition or equation of the dynamic friction and the kinetic friction, so the equations will be for static condition, the force we are considering as F dash, so it is represented as mu S R and basically if we are taking F is the friction force, so the basic formula we are taking as F equals to mu R where mu is the coefficient of friction and R is the reaction opposite to the weight of the body. Here if we are considering any body, the weight of the body is W. So against the W there is a reaction act vertically upward and if we are considering P is the applied force, so the friction force will act opposite to this applied force. So the friction force equation will be mu into R and mu is what? It is considered as the coefficient of friction for the static condition or the dynamic condition. It depends on the condition. So this particular coefficient of friction we will consider between the contact surfaces. It can be between the moving surface and the stationary surface or it can be between the two moving surfaces. So this coefficient of friction is always a constant and R is the reaction which is perpendicular to the horizontal surface or opposite to the weight of the body. So this is the 
general formula of the friction and if we are considering static friction so it is represented as fs or we are we can write here as f dash that is equals to mu s r that is equals to mu s mg because r is considered as equals to w that is equals to m g m is the mass and g is the gravitational acceleration so it will be equal to m s into m g and if we are writing the equation for the dynamic or kinetic friction so it will be f double dash that is equals to mu k into r and this will be equals to mu k mg here mu k is representing the coefficient of friction for kinetic condition or coefficient of kinetic friction and mu s is representing coefficient of static friction so this f double dash we can write as f k also so these are the equations for the static friction and the dynamic friction and r we are considering as equals to w that is equals to mg where m is the mass and g is the gravitational acceleration and gravitational acceleration has a constant value that is 9.81 and the uh, unit will be same as the acceleration so here whatever mass we have if we multiply the mass with the gravitational acceleration or 9.81 so we will get the value of w or the value of r so these are the equations which is related to friction that is mu s as i told you coefficient of static friction mu k coefficient of dynamic friction mu s r is representing the maximum horizontal component of reaction when the body is in static condition and mu k r is representing as the maximum horizontal component of reaction when the body is in dynamic condition so this is for the static and this is for the dynamic condition and as per the formula f equals to mu r because mu we are considering as a constant or coefficient of friction so the friction force is always directly proportional to reaction so as per this condition we can find out the equation of friction that is f equals to mu r if we want to find out the value of coefficient of friction so general value of coefficient of friction will be f by r and the static friction if we are considering so the coefficient of static friction will be f r by r or here the coefficient of kinetic friction will be f k by r so these are the values of coefficient of friction now if we have coefficient of friction for dynamic condition and the coefficient of friction for the static condition and we know friction value is always less during the kinetic or dynamic condition so in that particular condition the value of kinetic friction will always less than the value of coefficient of static friction so mu s will always greater than mu k and this is due to presence of irregularities on the surface this is the condition we are considering for mu k is less than mu s so these terms we have to remember when we solve any numerical which is related to friction thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ekeda and subscribe to ekeda